what happens then here? Then the Lord entered the first jhana. And leaving that, he entered the second. Leaving that, he entered the third. Uh, coming out of the third, he entered the fourth. Coming out of the fourth jhana, he entered the sphere of uh, unbounded space. Uh, coming out of that, he entered the sphere of unbounded consciousness. Uh, coming out of that, he entered the, the um, sphere or the plane of uh, nothingness. Uh, coming out of that, he entered the sphere of neither perception nor non-perception. Uh, and coming out of that, he attained the cessation of feeling and perception. Uh, so here the Buddha is taking the idea of a calm meditation, of peaceful meditation, of samadhi, if you like, to its pinnacle. A cessation of feeling and perception is the very highest point. You can take any kind of samadhi. There's nothing beyond that. And the reason why there's nothing beyond that is because everything has ceased. You can't go beyond everything has ceased. That's the end of everything. There's nothing more to be done after that, obviously. So this is how this happens. And uh, these states are extraordinarily profound. They're even getting into a jhana state once. And some people uh, do that on retreat occasionally. Even getting that once has a kind of revolutionary effect on your life. Uh, but uh, obviously you go beyond that. And these are things where you go into, you know, into these uh, ec really exceptional states. Uh, and I think the only way to really understand any of this is actually to experience it. Uh, but the names give you some idea of what is going on. When you come to something like the second jhana, the world is already completely still, absolutely still. No movement is possible for hours at the time. And from then on, what you're doing is not becoming more still, because you can't become more still than absolutely still. Absolutely still is already kind of the limit. So from then on, what you're doing is that you are reducing the content of the mind instead. Yeah, your content is disappearing here. And uh, so this is why every step here is more and more simple. The perception you have is more and more simple. There's less and less things uh, unless you get to the perception of nothingness. Uh, what is the perception of nothingness? Uh, I, this sounds pretty strange. Yeah? You, you perceive nothingness. Uh, there's, remember, there's no perception of you. Yeah? That's already gone a long time ago. It's a completely unified perception. All there is is nothingness. Uh, that's all there is. Uh, then you go to neither perception nor non-perception. You don't even know whether you're perceiving anymore. It's kind of so subtle, you don't know what's going on. Uh, this is one of those states you cannot use for insight because it's too subtle to be used for insight. Uh, and then finally, everything ceases. Uh, how do you know that everything has ceased? Uh, you're not there, right? So how can you possibly know? If everything has ceased, you're, not, you're gone as well. So how can you possibly know that this has happened? Uh, it's one of those conundrums in Buddhism that you... You know, you, you kind of think, especially when you're a young monk, you kind of reflect on these things. What, what is this all about? Uh, and you kind of try to figure, figure out, and you go to Ajahn Brahm, Ajahn, how can this possibly be here? And the way that you know these things is that uh, uh, because you can see the mind heading in that direction. And remember, when you come out of these states, you have an incredible clarity here. Because your mind is supremely powerful. The most powerful mind you can have uh, is the mind you have after one of these experiences. Uh, so you can see the whole process in retrospect and see what you went through uh, with, you know, very, very clearly. And you can see the mind is heading towards cessation. Everything becoming simpler and simpler and simpler and simpler until suddenly everything stops. Uh, and then suddenly you re-emerge and you have the most, the first thing that re-emerges is a very simple mental state which then gradually emerges into an ordinary uh, consciousness again. So you can, you, the, the, the way you know this is that, you know, seven days disappeared in the middle there. So it must have happened, something must have happened. What happened to those seven days? Okay, I went through this period, everything stopped. I came out again afterwards. And that's how you infer that things must have stopped for a period in between. So, this is the, so these are these states, but uh, it's kind of uh, amazing. Did, did anyone here like to stop? Does that sound good? <laughs> it's hard to imagine, isn't it? Uh, stopping completely. Uh, I mean, com really, being gone. It's not that you are feeling the stopping, you've actually gone completely. Uh, so again, uh, to be able to get what this is about, you're going to have to experience it and see what it means. Uh, so this is, uh, you know, the, for example, one of the kind of strange things about the Buddhist path is that the fourth jhana, you have left behind all the suffering and happiness. The fourth jhana is a state of neutral feeling or equanimity. The fourth jhana is better than happiness. 
Equanimity is better than happiness. It's one of those weird things on the Buddhist path. And again, of course, the only way you can get that is actually by experiencing it. So this is what the Buddha goes through. So let's, before I summarize or talk about why he is doing this, let's just go a little bit uh, further first of all. There. Then the Venerable Ananda said to Venerable Anuruddha, Venerable Anuruddha, the Lord has passed away here. No, friend Ananda, the Lord has not passed away. He has attained the cessation of feeling and perception. Yeah, when someone is in that state, you, you, it looks like they passed away. There's no kind of sense of them being alive anymore. So it's kind of natural to think that, unless you have some kind of uh, probably direct insight into reality and you can see what is going on. And Anuruddha was famous for his psychic powers, uh, so he was probably reading the Buddha's mind, uh, Kind of scary idea to read the Buddha's mind, isn't it? Uh, I kind of, uh, anyway, I don't know what you think about that, but uh, it sounds kind of slightly scary to me. Uh, maybe I'm a scaredy, scaredy cat. Uh, but uh, so he he uh, he's, so he thinks that, but he, Anuruddha says he doesn't. There's a small little thing there that you might notice, which is uh, slightly interesting in this context. I just want to point it out. Uh, you noted that. Uh, uh, Venerable Ananda says, Venerable Anuruddha. He calls him Bhante. Huh? Yeah? And whereas Anuruddha says, Friend to Ananda. Huh? Now, until this point, uh, they have all been friends, all been on friendly terms. Uh, but you may remember from the last time that uh, the Buddha says, After my passing away, a more junior monk should call a more senior monk Bhante. Where, whereas a more senior monk should call a more junior monk Avuso. Avuso is like the more friendly term to use. Uh, so now they've already started on that. Yeah, they kind of follow, follow the Buddha's instructions to the to the letter here. Yeah? This is what you're seeing here. Yeah? So I thought I might just point that. I'm not sure if you, if. Yeah, please, uh, go for it. Yeah. 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 It's a good question. Yes, that's a good question, isn't it? Because usually these attainments they are very long, yeah. And uh, usually it is said that if you even if you go into a third or fourth jhana, ten hours is is quite not uncommon for these attainments to last. Uh, end, ending of the cessation of perception of feeling, sanya vidaya niroda, can last up to seven days apparently. Yeah? So you sit there like a rock for seven days, nothing is happening. People think you're dead. They put you on a Big fun- on the big funeral pile, they try to burn you up, but the next day you come into the village again, uh, and you brush. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So that this is this is the point. But remember, the point here is that that is the maximum length. Yeah. So I think the point here is that someone like the Buddha. Remember, one of the ideas of uh, of being a master of samadhi is that you can determine the length of these states. You are able to go in and out as you please. Uh, so obviously, the Buddha would have mastered these states to to the maximum. Uh, so he would have gone into these things at a fairly short, short time. It wouldn't have been long, long times. So, uh, so uh, this is what, is what is going on here. Uh, so uh, that is the only way this makes any sense, because otherwise he, he would have, they would have taken weeks to, do, <laughs> to go through this sequence, yeah, which would kind of make, make it, the whole thing sound a bit silly. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Is it a demonstration to his disciples? Uh, maybe, yeah, yeah. Maybe that's part of it. Yeah. I mean, he obviously has taught these things before, so they are part of the part of the suttas as well. Yeah. But th- maybe this is a practical demonstration. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I think there's something else going on. I'll come back to that in a second. Here. Yeah. So then, uh, going on to the next paragraph here, then the Lord, leaving the attainment of cessation of feeling and perception, entered the sphere of neither perception nor perception. Emerging from that, he entered the sphere of nothingness. Uh, emerging from that, he entered the sphere of, uh, of boundless consciousness. Uh, leaving that, he entered the sphere of boundless space. Leaving that, he entered the fourth jhana. Leaving that, he entered the third jhana. Leaving that, the second jhana. Leaving that, the first jhana. Leaving the first jhana, he entered the second jhana. Leaving the second jhana, he entered the third jhana. Leaving that, he entered the fourth jhana. And leaving the fourth jhana, the Lord finally passed away. 
it sounds like a very elaborate thing to go through to pass away here. And uh, you, you are, we are bound to ask the question, why is this happening? Uh, if you didn't ask this question, it would be very strange because uh, it is so elaborate and so kind of, uh, you know, perhaps unexpected. How come we just didn't just die and kind of got, got it all over with? Uh, what is the purpose of all this? Uh, so, and I, I, I don't really know. I, th I think the purpose of all this, this is just a guess. The purpose of all of this, you will notice that the Buddha passed away after the fourth jhana. And uh, of course, one of the things about the fourth jhana is that uh, it is the state where according to the suttas, your breathing stops. Uh, and then you can be in that state without breathing for 10 hours. Uh, so how is that possible? If you don't breathe for 10 hours, most people, you normally die. If you don't breathe for 10 minutes, people die. I, I think there are some records, apparently people not breathing, being underwater for up to 40 minutes is kind of the absolute maximum. But here we're talking about long, long periods of time. How is that possible? And the reason why it is possible is that as you calm down, you're not just calming down your mind, you're calming down your entire metabolism to the point where the metabolism comes to a temporary halt. Yeah, it's a bit like hibernating. Animals in hibernation are a bit, little bit like that. The metabolism goes way, way down. But here you bring it to a complete halt. And of course, when the metabolism has come to a halt, no need for any oxygen anymore. If there's no need for any oxygen, you don't have to breathe. And this is why this is possible. Yeah? And uh, I was reading about some experiments that have been done recently uh, where they actually, where they induce this state of non-metabolism in people. Yeah, they've done it on animals and dogs and things before. And what they do is that they tap out all the blood. All the blood is tapped out or taken out of the body and it's replaced by some kind of saline solution. And then when the saline solution goes into the body, yeah, they've already started to cool it down. That saline solution is at a lower temperature, so they cool the body down very rapidly. And when that body gets cooled down, apparently it has a similar effect to what you are probably seeing here. You get put into suspended animation, is what they call it. And then they can leave, have the body like that for hours, come out afterwards, and the body is perfectly fine. So I, my guess is that what the Buddha is doing here is that he knows that his body is going to have to be on display for many days afterwards. Uh, one of the most famous uh, uh, spiritual master in human history uh, is going to be, it'll take a long time to do all the funeral, the rites and rituals and people saying goodbye and all of these kind of things. Uh, and because he knows that, I suspect he kind of he leaves his body in a state whereby it can last for seven days without really rotting or without anything happening to it. Uh, it's a kind of, it's a way of putting the body into a kind of suspended animation, if you like. Uh, yeah? And uh, this is what I suspect is going on here. Uh, because it would, it would have been probably quite devastating for people to see people, the Buddha's body starting to rot. You can imagine what that would feel like, maybe smell and all these kind of things. So he uses his power of meditation to avoid that. This is what I think is happening here. And this is why he first of all takes it down all the way down to, this is just speculation by the way, I don't really know, I'm, because it doesn't say anyway why he's doing this, but it seems like a re possible solution anyway to this strange conundrum. That's why he takes it all the way down to complete cessation of perception and feeling, because that is the deepest kind of peace. Yeah? And then he, from that, he then goes back to the fourth jhana, via the first jhana, back to the fourth jhana, so to achieve a maximum kind of calming down of the body. Yeah? Just a guess. I don't know. That's kind of my, my, uh, what, what I think might be happening here. Yeah? Uh, it could maybe be as... Uh, Huitong is suggesting as well that maybe there's some kind of demonstration of, uh, of, of the, you know, samadhi here. I don't know, but uh, 